Hello everyone, my name is Eric Jones, better known as the Turf Teacher. Uh, we are going to look at a uh, presentation that I put together um, from some information from my wife's company. They are very uh, big on LinkedIn and I uh, have known about LinkedIn for some time and you know experimented with it uh, when it first came out. But really, uh, just here in the past month or so, have I really jumped into LinkedIn and started believing in the power that it can uh, build for our businesses. So uh, uh, what we're going to talk about in this presentation is uh, how to set up the account, how to use LinkedIn, and then we'll go and uh, if we have time uh, towards the end of the lecture is go ahead and open up um, my uh my linkedin and uh and take a look at that so um but anyway appreciate you being here uh bright and early this morning and uh you know first things we should do when we get up is check our social media sites and uh linkedin being one of them since uh it's more business to business uh relationship building all right so um what type of social media um, do you usually think of when it comes to small businesses. And if you've seen the, uh, the other lectures that I have up on the, uh, the website, you, you already know uh, which are my favorites, which ones that I'm using every single day, uh, which ones that I believe are very important um, to small business owners and to uh, green industry professionals. Uh, we are the entrepreneurs out there. Um, you know, green industry professionals are, are, are some of the hardest working um, people out there. And um, these tools that we have um, with these social media apps should be our primary, our primary way of getting our information out there and ways to connect with potential clients and uh, to connect with potential uh, business relationships. And that's kind of what I look at LinkedIn um, uh, a little more, but let's let's take a look at the uh, the social media apps. If uh, if this is your first lecture uh, that you're watching with me, and I uh, really strongly believe in the ones that I have listed here. If you if you're not familiar with it, the first one being Twitter, uh, probably one of the oldest social media apps uh, that are out there, and uh, it's been around a while. Um, you know, my handle name on each one of these is Turf Teacher. Um, Hadn't uh, been on Twitter long with Turf Teacher, but uh, have been on it uh, personally uh, for, some, for some years now. But uh, it's really helping with the business. Uh, and I actually think Twitter combined with LinkedIn is more of your business to business communications. Um, you know, LinkedIn, you're actually following the people. There are company pages too on LinkedIn, but you're, you're following like your sales rep from the fertilized company. You're following uh, your actual salesman from the dealership of the mower, uh, you know, the mower manufacturers or the dealerships. You're, you know, you're following the salesman at uh, the landscape supply houses. You're, you're linking up with those guys personally. And I almost kind of think uh, of LinkedIn being more of a, kind of a Facebook for businesses. It's, uh, it's just that interaction uh, amongst people in, instead of, you know, company to company. Whereas I look at Twitter, and if you combine these two, Twitter, I think, you know, you're following the company. You're following um, your landscape supply house. You're following the uh, um, uh, fertilized manufacturer, and you're getting that information from them from, from that side. So uh, very good business tools you know, with, with these two from business to business, in my personal belief. I don't think that I'm gonna get many residential landscape customers or irrigation customers from Twitter, but I'm gonna get a lot of information and, and new information uh, about, um, you know, new ideas, new products that we can use uh, in, in our businesses. And then, you know, with LinkedIn, you're following, um, you know, each sales rep. And, and linking up with them, hence LinkedIn uh, on that social media app. And then we have the one there with the, uh, the camera, Instagram, um, you know, used to pop up pictures and, uh, and, and short video clips actually on your page. And then you can post to your storyboard uh, from Instagram, Instagram owned by Facebook. So 
Uh, Facebook knew that it was up and coming and decided they better go ahead and latch on to it, and they did. Uh, so anything that you post from Instagram, you can send it automatically to Facebook just as, uh, as you can to Twitter. So post that picture on Instagram, automatically send it to your Twitter and your Facebook. Uh, the one here, the little ghost with the dots around it, uh, Snapchat, that is actually a Snapchat code. So what you could do is send that to somebody uh, or post that, you know, put that on, on, on print or on uh, possibly even the side of your truck. Somebody could come up and within the Snapchat app, take a picture of it and they automatically start following you. So uh, Snapchat, very similar um, to Instagram. Uh, Instagram modeled their stories after Snapchat because Snapchat is just a story board. You can take a picture, send it to someone or a short video, it's gonna disappear you know, they can hit replay and watch it uh, again. Uh, you can set the, the, the time duration. They can either see it from three seconds all the way up to uh, 10 seconds, I believe. It may be a little bit longer now, um, but you can set that or you can set it up to indefinite. But once they view it and that they can view it again, it's gone forever on your story. Uh, you post a pic or a video, it's gone after 24 hours, but they can go back and, and see it as many times as they need. Facebook also has the uh, the storyboard now because Facebook tried buying uh, Snapchat uh, a few years back. They offered them somewhere in the range of $3 billion and uh, they turned it down uh, to only uh, uh, have to start their own. You know, Snapchat knew that they were the uh, up and coming um, social media app. And so Facebook wanted to, to grab it. And since they uh, said no to the offer, uh, Facebook come up with their storyboard as well, and you know Facebook stories. And then last but not least, YouTube. Um, you know, posting short videos, um, going YouTube live. Uh, actually, you know, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. You can all go live. You can, you know, hold that phone up, start talking to your customers and your clients live, or you can go live from job sites. Um, actually, uh, did a, a seminar. Uh, a few weeks back in Raleigh, one of the guys in the, uh, the seminar, um, you know, each one of his crew leaders has a cell phone and they have the Facebook app on it. And he has his guys go live a couple times during the day uh, showing the progress on job sites. And he said that's been a very, very uh, big boost uh, for him because their customers and potential clients were seeing their crews in action and, uh, you know, seeing progress made each day from the certain uh, job sites they were on. So I thought that was a really, a really good marketing tool for him because, you know, as a business owner, we wear many hats. Uh, now you're thinking, wow, I've got to, I've got to really jump on this social media thing. How else am I going to find time, um, to do anything else? We're already booked. We're already, uh, covered up, um, with all the jobs that we have to do ourselves to keep our businesses running, but don't, think that um, you don't have to do the social media. Um, it's, it's there, it's what our customers wanna see, um, it's, it's the wave of the future. And everybody keeps talking about, well, you know, my word of mouth is the best advertisement um, that I'll ever need. And I agree with you on that. Word of mouth is more, um, more valued than anything else. But what has happened to word of mouth? It has gone social, and the word of mouth is now the new social media. Just think, you've got a picture of a client, and uh, they post it to any one of their social media sites. They take a picture and of, a, of, a, of a hardscape job you've done for them or a new install, and they take a picture, and they put it on their social media, and they tag your page in it. Just think of the connections you're already making. Look how many people are going to view that post. What if they what if they have 10,000 family and friends on Facebook? You know, that's 10,000 people that could possibly view your picture that's there forever. You're tagged in it. It's it's there. And the same thing for LinkedIn. I like posting pics um, you know, on our landscape side, but when it comes to turf teacher I'm posting short videos talking about the lectures that are up. My students follow me. I've made connections with them. We, 
uh, post stuff that happens here at the school, at the college, all that is 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 kind of uh, entertained in my LinkedIn page. But and we're going to jump back on LinkedIn. But guys, just just pay attention. The the icons that you see here: LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, and YouTube. I think are pretty pretty uh, important um, tools that you can have in your marketing. And the good thing about it. And you're thinking that you're going to spend a lot of time doing this. You don't necessarily have to spend a lot of time doing it. You know, you like I said, you could post to Instagram. It automatically goes to Twitter. It automatically goes to Facebook. How I do it is I take my pictures with the Snapchat app, put it on the story. I've saved it to my phone, then post it to uh, Instagram, whether it be my page, which will automatically go to Twitter and Facebook. Or if I post it to my Instagram story, it's automatically going to go to my Facebook story, and then I'd have to make a separate post to Twitter. So you can you can you know double up on the on the apps with just one post there. And and if you're having a hard time doing it, like I said, you're wearing too many hats. You're the accountant for the company. You're the scheduler for the company. You're the estimator. We're we're all small business owners, and so time is is, is of the essence. But uh, have somebody on staff do this for you. Most of you have children, um, you know, that are all about these apps. So they know how to use them. They know how to run them. You know, take your kid along, uh, you know, for the, for the day and have them take pictures for you and post it to the social media and get them to help you um, uh, to learn it. I learned of Snapchat and I learned of Instagram uh, from my children. You know, I knew what YouTube was. It's been around a while. It's, it's the second largest search engine. Um, it's, you know, second to TV. There's over 1.25 billion hours of TV watched a day. YouTube is right on the heels of television and will surpass it one day. People are going to go to YouTube before they turn the TV on. Um, I think it's going to really put a damper on uh, you know your satellite TV and your cable TV because everything can be watched there at YouTube and my kids who have a TV in their room with apps on it would uh, would rather lay in bed and use their phones and watch a, uh, a YouTube video than to get up and turn the TV on everything everything is contained in this thing right here this is the power uh, of marketing for your business so again little Brief intro. Uh, I know I do that on each of the videos uh, in the in uh, that I teach on social media because I really believe in the importance uh, of every one of the apps that you see here. Um, so let's get started on about what is LinkedIn, and LinkedIn is basically a social networking site uh, that business and employment oriented. Um, operates via the website and mobile apps. Um, it's like an employment agency, really, to be honest with you. Um, you know, because people post resumes, recruiters are looking at it really hard, trying to, uh, to place people in certain positions. Um, it, it's, it's really good for that. And, and kind of let me step back a little bit. You know, when I was younger, um, you know, hey, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a young man anymore, I'm 44. Uh, but when I uh, first got out of college and was working for my parents full time, um, you know, I really started promoting uh, the business and I didn't have the tools like this. I mean, if I would have started out today with the, uh, uh, the social media sites, if I was starting today and had the social media sites and with my work ethic and, 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 and what I knew back 20 years ago, there's no telling where our landscape business would be. And that's why I'm trying to preach this to you guys now. This is a land grab opportunity. It is still new. It is still out there. It's up for grabs. And whoever doesn't jump on the social media bandwagon is going to be left behind because this is where our customers are. You know, they're not on TV. They're not on radio anymore, which radio is going to come back. Voice is going to come back. It may not be the old digital box that's sitting in the kitchen that turns on but everything is going to voice activated and that's that's new and upcoming yes podcasts have been around now look at alexa skills uh you know you've got google voice all that is happening voice interaction so let me don't I'm not gonna jump on that soapbox right now but uh uh 
uh, voice is coming back, but with, with LinkedIn, and this kind of reminds me of the, uh, the things that I did when I first got started. My chiropractor, because I got hurt on the job, I had to go to a chiropractor, invited me to start going to these weekly breakfast meetings and interacting and linking up with other professionals, whether it be a dentist, um, other doctors, accountants, lawyers, real estate brokers, you know, everybody that is in a professional type setting, we would get together, have breakfast once a week, and we stayed connected. We actually had to get up and drive to the restaurants and do that. With apps like LinkedIn, you don't have to do that no more. Everything is connected via your phone, uh, via you know the messaging within it, the posts that you make, the likes that you make, the recommendations that you make to each other, the recommendations you get back in return. All of that happens from your cell phone. All of it can happen from the computer. And I like LinkedIn based on that because I can set it down at my desktop and get on LinkedIn and take care of business uh, on there just as I can from my mobile app. Um, um, so you can do it both. Um, but again, you're connecting with other industry professionals, uh, not only in horticulture, but other business professionals that's only going to help you grow your business. And, and like I said, my, uh, uh, my chiropractor got me to come into those breakfast meetings. We got a lot of work from it. Uh, there was a lot of interaction, a lot of helping each other out, uh, could run ideas by people. And, and this app right here just reminds me of that, those weekly breakfasts that we had, but I had access to it 100% of the time, not just one day a week. So we're going to look at how to create your account uh, and so you would need to go to a website. You'd need to go to a browser. We're going to do it on a computer. Uh, and then you download the app and then log in. So you'd go to LinkedIn.com uh, to get signed up. Um, you're going to enter your name, email address, and create a password. So all this is done on the computer. Look, I'm just creating a, a, a generic one here. We do this uh, at the college all the time. Uh, so the students can see how to do it. But you know, first name turf, last name teacher. Uh, I'm using the email turftuber at gmail. Set up a password. Uh, it needs to be six or more characters. Um, there is a two-factor uh, uh, authentication uh, to verify your account. You'd want to send it to your phone by text or call and enter your phone number. It's going to send it by code. Always do it with text. Uh, and then you get the little pop-up and you would uh, um, um, get, get it authenticated with the, uh, the code that they send you back. And it's saying, welcome turf, let's start your profile, let's connect with people you know, and let's engage with them on the topics that you care about. And that's, that's the coolest thing about LinkedIn is the groups that are on LinkedIn. You can start your own group or you can join a group and there's a lot out there for green industry. So. Um, United States, you know, enter in a uh, uh, postal code there. You're a business owner, most recent company, turf teacher industry. Uh, the closest one for me on turf, uh, turf teacher was education management. Um, so I put that on there. Students, we have our students create pages here at the college. So when you start following me and we connect on LinkedIn, you have access um, to my students. There's a chance for you to interact with them. And, um, you know, guys, I, I'll have to admit that uh, uh, I'm proud of our students that we have right now. I, I think I have some of the best students that I've had in my career here at the college. Um, they're all graduating here in May. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, April 12th today. So uh, we've got just a, uh, a few more weeks and our students are graduating. All of them have jobs waiting on them right now. A lot of it has to do with social media. I connected with a large company uh, down east, uh, met them at the Green and Grow show, and actually introduced them to, to one of our students. And uh, you know, uh, he was hired, all based on the connections that I made on social media. So not only am I trying to bring you guys value in, in teaching you how to use the social media and how to better your business, uh, by bringing you CEUs and 
giving you information and stuff that's, that's going to help you run your business. I also want to get you introduced to my students. Um, you know, the community college system is, is the best place for, for, for green industry professionals to find good employees. Our students, we're trying to get them to graduate, and most of them are with their pesticide license and the certified plant professional. And if they don't have it at graduation, they've already got it scheduled uh, for the summer. It just depends on their schedule and timing. But we've got several students graduating with pesticide and certified plant professional this year, something that I'm very proud of. And another thing that I'm proud of is that I'm connecting with you, the landscape contractors and irrigation contractors, via social media in helping my students find good career oriented jobs. So that's one reason you and I should be connected uh, on social media. Um, so what are you most interested in? You're gonna select your interests. Uh, one, you wanna build that professional network, so yes. Uh, are you looking for a job? My students, they're doing that, they're finding a job. Or staying up to date with my industry, not sure, but you're open, you can click that. Uh, then you'll need to confirm your email. You know, I'm confirming turf tuber. A uh, little joke about that. We uh, uh, started a um, YouTube page called uh, Turf Tuber, uh, but still, everything that we post goes to Turf Teacher. I'm, I'm actually marketing Turf Teacher 100%. Uh, but again, that was a uh, lab that we'd done in school and kind of showed the students how to set up their YouTube. But uh, uh, my my kids, you know, they're always talking about their favorite YouTuber. Um, that they're watching. They're either watching, uh, you know, ladies how to put correctly put makeup on or they're learning about how to make slime. You know, those are their favorite topics and they're always talking about their favorite YouTuber. So we kind of thought of Turf Tuber. My favorite YouTuber is Turf Tuber uh, here at the college. So we kind of had fun playing with that. Um, but verify it, confirm your email address. Um, quickly, uh, Grow your professional network. Again, 70% of jobs come from people you know. You can import your address book, and I, I highly recommend doing that um, because you're already gonna have people uh, with that email address who already have LinkedIn accounts, so it's automatically gonna connect it. Just like, just like you, uh, you connect uh, with Facebook, and uh, I entered, uh, I'm still Army Reserve, and I'm trying to switch to a unit, and uh, I got the, uh, the first sergeant's and commander's phone number of the unit that I'm trying to, to, to move over into and automatically brought them up as um, uh, potential Facebook friends because the phone number was tied to that name. And so we connected on Facebook automatically, starting to get to know each other, and that kind of helps me move into that new unit because the first sergeant and commander are starting to know who I am based on my social media. So definitely import your contacts. And looks great, turf, turf teacher, business owner, turf teacher, uh, Raleigh-Durham area. Yes, we have a you know small little uh, office there in Raleigh. We're not really operating out of it. It's just a place to do some paperwork and stuff like that uh, when we're um, in the area. But we're mainly out of Winston-Salem and Greensboro. But, uh, Add your profile pic. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this uh, here in a minute. That's something that I uh, I kind of learned the hard way. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you tell you about that when we start talking about your profile pics. Um, get the LinkedIn app. You can type in your phone number and it'll send you a link to download the app, or you can go to the app stores uh, either on Google Play or or iTunes. Uh, and then you'd want to download the app once you've created your account. Um, I find myself on LinkedIn just as much as I am Instagram. Um, you know, I do have to tell you that my favorite two is Snapchat and Instagram because everything we do is visual. I'm trying to visually put out content every single day. Uh, I am learning how to use the LinkedIn that way by posting the same pics. Or if I put a picture up on, or a video up on YouTube, it's going to LinkedIn automatically. Um, so I'm still uh, experimenting with that and, and, and learning how to use LinkedIn to its fullest. 
And I'll have to admit, my wife is one of the greatest. Uh, I've seen her build her uh, LinkedIn page very, very quickly. Uh, you know, she works for a large corporation, so they brought in people to get them started and, and, and kind of almost made them uh, uh, or, or really said, you need to be on LinkedIn. And, and in her industry, she's in the healthcare industry, she needs to be on there. And she's made great connections, and I've seen her start from just a few um, connections to, to almost a thousand now in, in a short period of time. So uh, proud of her for doing that. Um, Let's see, and there we are back to uh, your home page, uh, which is from the computer. Now, I'll have to admit, I do like um, um, doing LinkedIn and, and Twitter from my desktop. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, I sit at a desk quite a bit during my office hour at the college uh, or actually, you know, working on uh writing PowerPoints, whatever. I keep these open so the messages come up. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, my eyes aren't so good that I need to look at this phone 24 seven, but uh, uh, I like keeping on, keeping my LinkedIn open there at my desk on, on the computer. This is your homepage. You, uh, it's gonna tell you if your profile's missing something. Uh, you need to make sure that that profile is 100% complete. It doesn't take long. Uh, I kept getting messages from LinkedIn to finish your profile, finish your profile. And, and I just did that and I changed my profile pic, uh, added some more information. And now I've got my, my profile page uh, or profile at 100%. You could build your network, make connections uh, that mean more to you. And, and hear about the new opportunities. Aim for 30 to start with. Um, and basically, if you make a connection with somebody, go and look at their connections and then connect with everybody that they're uh, connected to. Uh, stay in the know, follow industry experts to keep up with the latest in your feed or in your field. And then here you can uh, you know, share an article, photo, video, or an idea and then post it. And the good thing is, guys, you know, there are company pages too. Uh, so you may want to have a company page. I don't have one set up for Turf Teacher. Again, it's all about building your brand. Uh, you know, I'm a one man show right now. I do have uh, two assistants that help me, but they're not actually uh, producing content or, or actually going out and lecturing. They're actually just helping me uh, here at the, at the college, here with Turf Teacher. And then they're they're doing some stuff for me uh, within the landscape business that we still operate. So um, I'm building a personal brand. I am Turf Teacher, so I've built that brand. Turf Teacher Inc. Yes, is the company that we operate under, but I'm still trying to build my personal brand. Your brand can either be your company or it can be personally. You know, uh, my students that are being hired by these awesome companies. Uh, out here based on our social media uh, marketing, uh, they're building their personal brand. They're not wanting to start a their own business, you know, or at least right now, but they want to be on social media. And so I'm like, why not build your personal brand? You're working for a large corporation, a large landscape firm. You've, you've got potential for career, uh, you know, for a lifelong career with these companies. Start building your personal brand be you who works for this great company, but build your personal brand and then attach your, um, your company to, to all your posts, tag them in it. I'm, 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 I'm Adam Smith with ABC landscaping, you know, but you're building that name, Adam Smith. And that's what I'm doing with turf teacher. And that's what I like with, with, with the LinkedIn. It's more about the individual. Uh, than it is the company. Um, there you can see, uh, you know, everything that's complete. You can change this uh, background right here. Um, and the easiest thing to do is when we open up my page, we'll be able to see uh, everything, uh, that how we can change this stuff and make it work for us. Um, so how to create a great profile. It's the first impression 
um, of your professional image. And it's uh, essential to have up-to-date profile with clearly outlined work experience. Um, you know, we're all self-employed. We either started out in the industry. I mean, you know, I, I guess I'm not ashamed to say, but, you know, my resume is small. I mean, the only other employer that I've had besides the college um, is Uncle Sam and my parents. Now, briefly, yeah, I did work at Home Depot uh, when I first got married and uh, had young children. Uh, I mean, we just needed a little extra cash. So I worked there for about a year, but I don't even put that on the resume. My only true career paths uh, were working for my parents, then in the military, both the Navy and Army, and then here teaching at the college along with, with turf teachers. So I've not jumped around. My resume is short and sweet, but it all pertains to green industry. I've always been in the horticulture field other than my time with the military. Um, so it's very easy for me to, to put that, uh, my, my work on here. Um, and then we're not getting into how to write a resume and definitely on LinkedIn, you don't want to copy and paste your resume, but you want to make sure that you, you define your experience on your profile page. Um, your profile pic, choose a high quality headshot for your profile pic. And you saw that on my personal page that I had the logo. Hence, I've went back and changed it. If you find me on LinkedIn, it's turf teacher, not turf tuber. Uh, you'll see uh, uh, a not so good looking picture of myself, but uh, it's what I had. It's what I had on the computer. Um, yes, I do wear a suit sometimes here at the college. It's not my favorite thing to do, but I do most of my pictures that the students take or that, that we take at the job sites. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm in landscape attire. You know, we're outside working. So it's a picture that I, I just grabbed. It was kind of a selfie in my office. Um, having a picture makes your profile 14 times more likely to be viewed. Um, and, and it is. So, so, so make, it, make it a good picture. Uh, you know, put on that polo shirt uh, if, uh, if you've got one. If you're like my dad, you probably don't have any clean. I've always told him to keep a nice elite landscape shirt in the truck to go do estimates. Um, so be in the work attire that you wear, but make it a nice polo or button up with your company logo. Um, and here we got some, some samples of do's and don'ts when it comes to, uh, your, your profile pic. It needs to have a light and simple background. As you can see, uh, down here, uh, the face should fill up 60% of the frame work appropriate clothing. So again, we're in the landscape and irrigation business. So we, we need to have just a, uh, a collared shirt on with our logo would be fine and make sure you have that great smile and very, um, three good examples here. Uh, you know, even though her background's a little fuzzy, you know, you can see her face clearly. Uh, she's dressed in work attire. She's got a gorgeous smile going on there. People are going to click on her page. Same thing here, um, you know, maybe just a little lighter background, but you know, again, nice smile, uh, makes you uh, see who they are. You can tell they're, you know, industry professionals. You're gonna, you're gonna connect with them. The young man here, good smile. I like the, the lighter background. It kind of pops, um, you know, pops him out from, he's not faded into it, but you know, three good examples. Uh, but I like how the young man did his picture here. What you don't want to do is have any distractions in the background. Uh, you know, very fuzzy and blurry back there. And there's cars. Uh, he's on his phone. Uh, you don't want that. And you want to be the only person in the photo. You know, she may have posted this thinking that was a good picture of herself. But again, you know, there she's got somebody's arm around her. It's just not a professional image that we would want to display. So uh, make sure we do the do's and don't do the don'ts. Um, but some, some good information on your profile pic. Headline, this is the text directly below your name. You can either list your job title or make it more creative. I like making it more creative. Um, you know, because we're all business owners, we're gonna know that. So I like the little catchy, 
um, um, text that we can put below our name. You know, mine on my page is life, uh, life lessons and landscape lectures. Um, it's, it's what I try to do. I'm not only bringing you guys lectures on, on landscaping and how to run your landscape business, but I'm also teaching life lessons because I'm a failure model. Uh, hopefully I'm a role model to you uh, as well, but uh, I'll be the first to tell you my mistakes and I've always heard that a failure model, you can learn a lot more from them than you can the role models. Because when somebody's willing to uh, talk about their failures, whether it be in business or life, and you learn from them, that's valuable, valuable information uh, and an education that you can't find in any uh, classroom setting. So uh, life lessons and uh, landscape lectures. Uh, make sure that it is a powerful and precise statement. Uh, explain what you do in a creative way. And then easily define your industry and your role. And so look at these two examples here. Teaching you how to focus on your business. So this is probably taken uh, from a business coach. And then business motivation is the key to success. And y'all have heard me talk about being motivated and having business motivation. You know, last year's classes were was entitled the business motivation course. Um, so basically what that is saying, uh, instead of listing job title, instead of saying professor of horticulture, saying, hey, teaching you how to focus on your business. Um, the don'ts when it comes to your statement is uh, try not just listing your job title. I mean, you can, but if, if, if you can come up with something catchy like that, do it. Landscaper at Elite Landscape Service, not good enough. Or teacher, you know, I'm, I think I'm much more than that. Uh, I love being a teacher, uh, but I'm hoping I'm doing those life lessons along with the landscape lectures. So uh, come up with this, jot them down. Uh, take out a, a piece of scratch paper and start thinking about what you do and what you do for your business. You know, uh, what do you do for your customers? What is it that you want them to know you for? Um, summary and experience. These fields are used to tell your story. Focus on how you uh, add value to your business or organization. Um, you know, what is it that you, what, what have you done? What made you come to the landscape industry? Um, did you work somewhere else and, and got burnt out? It's okay, people love hearing your stories. So uh, put this in your summary, you know, was, a, was an accountant, got tired of sitting behind a desk. So I'm bringing forth um, accounting principles and, and business management experience to, to my landscape company and, um, and going from there, I'm loving my job now. And the one thing that I think we all lack as landscape owners is the business side. We, we get into horticulture because we love the outdoors and we love being uh, with the plant materials and with the, with the trees and just, and just being outside. And so we always put our business in, you know, to late at night or on the weekends and then we're tired, we're exhausted, we need to spend time with our families. So our financials are kind of the last to get done. So um, if, if you have experience in, in, in the accounting or financial industry and you come over to horticulture, because horticulture is a career changing job. We have a lot of students that come in, they're burnt out with working in factories, working in offices, and they're just like, I'm done. I wanna do what I have had a passion about. And so they come back and get their associate's degree in horticulture. Be proud of that. Talk about your experience. Keep, uh, keep your summary and experience interesting. Make it conversational. Uh, write in the first person. Include current and past positions. Hey, you know, I was an accountant. Now I'm a, now I'm a landscape contractor. Uh, be specific in the details of accomplishments. Um, I probably need to go back and look at that on my page. Um, I think my experience, especially my military experience um, and, and what happened to me medically is a good conversation piece. And it's, it was a wake up call for me, um, you know, what happened to me while I was on active duty. Don't, uh, do not 
copy and paste your resume and then always refrain from using cliche uh, little titles uh, or, or, or statements within your experience and your summary. So, but again, people love hearing how you got to where you're at. And um, that's, that's, I think it's the most interesting thing about, about all of us, how we became horticulture professionals. What made us do it? Did we grow up in the family business? Um, did we just get burnt out at, at our past job and say, you know, I'm going to go after what, what inspires me? What, what is my drive? What is my passion? You know, let people know that. Uh, so here is some examples uh, of a summary. Uh, no, uh, no one is good at everything. As much as you have been, may be in command of your core offering, chances are your uh, messaging doesn't quite make the grade. I help business people get their messages out clearly, concisely, and accurately. My writing, editing, and webinar management services help clients who struggle with con uh, content reach their target audience with sharp, meaningful, and relevant information. Whether it's your blog, website, newsletter, book, social media accounts, or more, getting to the point and conveying simply and strong what you do or offer is essential. That's where I come in. And if you need help um, setting, up, uh, setting up webinars, webcasts, managing them, moderating them, talk to me as well. I've conducted or supported more than 100 in the last few years. If I can't be of service, I may know who others who can meet your needs. After all, creating and fostering relationships and giving back is the cornerstone of conducting business today. Specialties include writing, editing, synthesizing, elaborate materials, team building and collaboration, high-level relationships, flexibility, and multitasking. Managing and hosting webinars, startups, and online communities. So there we're looking at you know, probably a marketing professional um, who is helping people in, in all uh, industries, uh, just with their social media, their websites, uh, doing their newsletters or whatever. So a good summary um, uh, and talking about what they do. That is their background. Uh, recommendations, write, uh, request recommendations from colleagues and clients and choose which ones to display. And uh, again, You've heard me <laughs> multiple times if you've watched my lectures before talking about the difference between colleagues and client. I mean, colleagues and competitors. Your competitors aren't going to be on LinkedIn. You know, the fly-by-nighter who's just wanting to cut grass and uh, go home at two o'clock and you know get enough cash for the weekend. Uh, you know, the one-man crews. They're they're not going to be on LinkedIn. So. Get those recommendations from your colleagues, other landscape contractors, irrigation contractors, the nurserymen, um, you know, anybody that's in this green industry, get the recommendations, even from, from your accountants, your, your, um, your college professors, anybody that, uh, that you feel comfortable with, ask for that recommendation. Uh, and then choose the ones you want, you want to show. Uh, these help you find new opportunities and strengthen your online professional uh, identity. Let's see. Do ask for recommendations from colleagues and clients. Ask to be recommended for something specific that you've worked on together. So um, you and a, and a colleague may have worked at a, uh, a smaller landscape company a few years ago, but you, you did this big project together. Ask them to talk about that. Uh, and then write a recommendation for them. Work back and forth and help each other out. Uh, don't hesitate to ask and, uh, and don't forget uh, to, to give back. If somebody gives you a recommendation, give them one back as well. Join groups. Uh, networking groups give you a chance to learn and stay current through uh, participation in discussions in your industry and uh, groups give you a chance to position yourself as an expert in the field. So um, join the groups, search for them. Uh, you know, there's landscape groups out there, um, irrigation groups, find them, join them. And if you don't see something that you like, go ahead and start your own group and start asking people to join it. Um, but what you want to do is that last sentence there. You want to make, make sure that you're positioning yourself uh, as an uh, as an expert in the in the industry, 
do uh, use your judgment when deciding which groups to join based on how your membership will be showcased on your profile. And don't join a group that is irrelevant to your industry or experience. And that goes along with all social media sites. You want to stay true to your audience. Uh, we're in the green industry, so we don't want to start um, joining groups, um, you know, that are in the healthcare field. You know, my wife, I love her to death, and we do have a connection uh, based on um, some job experience. Like I said, she's in the healthcare industry. I'm, I'm a medic in the Army Reserve, so some of the stuff that, that we get to do as Army medics, she's fascinated by. Some of the stuff I see that they're doing, I think is awesome. And, you know, but military medicine and civilian medicine is totally different and separate. Um, but, you know, we do have... Uh, a connection on that, but uh, we we uh, are connected on LinkedIn, but I'm not joining her groups, and she's definitely not interested in the uh, the, the horticulture side of things. So um, stay true to your audience when it comes to the social media, and even on Instagram and on Snapchat. I'm always posting about horticulture, you know, whether it's at the college, you know, the stuff that we do here, uh, and stuff that I do, I do as department chair and program coordinator. Um, I'm posting about that for my students and then I'm posting stuff uh, for you guys uh, about the new lecture that's on Moodle or on the website and then stuff about running your business. I'm not going to start posting stuff, uh, um, you know, let's say about my army medicine. I'm not going to post a picture on my um, I might put up a picture in uniform or something if it's Memorial Day or something like that, but I'm not, when I go to drill, I'm not going to post to my Snapchat or to my Instagram talking about how to do a chest tube or, you know, to do a cricotomy. That doesn't interest you guys. You want to learn about horticulture. And so stay true to your audience, stay true to your groups, and don't deviate from that uh, because you will lose connections and you will you lose followers. Um, Increase your profile visibility. Your LinkedIn profile is visible when people search for you on Google, Yahoo, and, and even Bing. So um, make sure that it's complete. That is probably um, the, the hardest thing that people start. They, they, they create the account, and, and on all the social medias, they'll open the account, they won't complete their profile, they don't have that profile pick, and you just look like you're not existent uh, when you when you don't have that and I think it's better to not have LinkedIn at all than to have that profile that's not finished or without that crisp clean headshot um, it just it just kind of makes you look bad you look unfinished um, edit your public profile from the settings page uh, make visible to everyone uh, or no one in the search engine results. So you can make yourself visible or you can hide it. Show the basics like your name, the industry that you're in, where you're located, and your recommendations. Add or remove elements such as the profile pic, current positions, or education so that can be changed to get a new job. You know, and LinkedIn's about finding new jobs. I mean, that's the recruiters look heavily on LinkedIn to, to, to find good candidates. Um, customize your public profile URL to enhance your online visibility and share your profile more easily with others. Now, that's something that I did just last night was change my URL. Um, and I did it from the settings page, uh, just like we're talking about here. You know, it was very lengthy, you know, E. Jones something, numbers, alphabets, and my poor wife, hers is still that way. But I just went in and I changed it to Turf Teacher. And... Uh, so I'm very easy to find on LinkedIn now by just searching for Turf Teacher. So customize it to your name. Um, you know, your business page would probably have your business name on there. But, uh, you know, if, uh, you know, people know my dad is the Strawberry Man. You know, if he had a LinkedIn, he probably would put it on the Strawberry Man. That's just what he's known for. Even though he's been in the landscape contracting industry uh, for years, um, trying to think when dad first got his registration before it was a license, um, you know, he didn't have one of the lowest numbers, but his number was pretty low. So, um, 
Um, but he's just known now as, as the strawberry guy, even though he's still uh, in the landscape business. Um, so what do you do after you've created your profile? You engage your network. And that's what we need to do on all uh, of our social medias. Engage, engage, engage. And, you know, if you've seen my Instagram lecture, if you've seen my YouTube lecture, uh, Snapchat lecture, uh, or even the uh, what is social media or um, uh, uh, the first one that's on, uh, you know, this year for, for the for the 17, 18 year, um, the importance of social media, you've got to engage your your people, your network, your followers. Um, you know, questions that you ask, posts that you do uh, put up, is you know, you're trying to get those comments, you're trying to get those likes. Uh, if it's a video, you're trying to get those views, you're engaging uh, uh, your network. Make those connections, every time you connect, with the person, you also connect to the people that they know, um, make connections with present and past coworkers, industry peers, um, and present, past, and future clients and customers. So uh, all that, I'm staying in contact with my students, my current students, my past students. Uh, I even have you know uh, a couple new students that are starting, starting in the fall that we've made that connection. And so guys, with us, you need to be connected not only to industry professionals, your colleagues, uh, other professionals that we might want to work for, your real estate brokers, property management companies, um, insurance companies. You're making connections with that, but make connections with all your local community colleges. Uh, make connections with people at the at the local high school. You know, um, a lot of students don't have the opportunity to go to college. You might find some good workers right out of the high school, you know, so connect with the guidance counselors at, at high schools and, 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 and find, find people to help you, um, you know, to grow your business. And that's, that's what it's for. And LinkedIn is the best place, I think, for, uh, for people uh, who are looking for jobs or who are looking to, um, um, to move up in, in their current positions. So make those connections with everybody that you can think of. Uh, use the search at the top of the home page, import your contacts, and then click on the My Network uh, section. Again, that's a screenshot from, um, from the desktop version. Join groups, share content, find answers. Uh, you can post and view jobs that are out there. You're making business contacts and then establish yourself as the industry expert again. Um, you know, and make it the local industry expert. If you're in the Raleigh area, you know, focus on that side of town. But if you're all across the state, I know some of you uh, landscape companies, uh, you know, have offices uh, in the Carolinas all over the place. Uh, so make yourself as that industry expert of the Carolinas. Um, become unique to where you're at the industry expert. Follow companies and industry leaders uh, where you may be looking to recruit talent. Follow your competitors. Eh, if they're on there, I always tell you, you know, if you're on LinkedIn, you're my colleague. If you're a licensed landscape contractor, you're my colleague. Um, you know, I'm big on the difference between competitors and colleagues. Uh, but if you are, see some of your competitors and see them out there, it can give you a competitive market uh, intelligence um, to even guide your conversations, um, you know, see what they're doing, see which jobs they're tackling. And uh, it just kind of gives you an edge um, and, and gives you an eye on what they're doing. Share updates, uh, engage your audience with useful and interesting content, um, insightful articles, uh, industry insights, job opportunities. And I always see my, my wife, she's posting, uh, all these articles on her LinkedIn and it's all industry related. It's everything that she does at work and she keeps building connections off of that. And I'm, I'm kind of proud of her for doing that. You know, she's, she's been a Facebook junkie uh, ever since I've known her. Um, and um, she's just, you know, that's, that's her thing to do at night is to lay in bed and uh, read people's feeds on Facebook. But during the day, I'm seeing her make several, several posts on LinkedIn and growing her connections. Um, 
create a two-way dialogue with your network. And then your network, again, will start to view you as the green industry expert. So uh, it's all about engagement. It's all about um, uh, communicating with, you, with your connections. And that will wrap up the, uh, the lecture on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, I know we're almost right in an hour at this lecture. Um, uh, I know we talked about I might log into to my account and kind of show you my page, but we'll do that in another um, uh, short video. So anyway, I appreciate you guys um, taking the time to view this lecture. Hope it was uh, worth an hour of your time, and I hope to see you on LinkedIn. Um, follow me on that. Guys, I not only want to bring you CEUs and value to your business, I want to bring you uh, students. I want to bring you college associate degree horticulture students uh, to your business. Um, I'd love for you guys to connect with me, come into the classroom, meet our students. Uh, you know, I always tell everybody that you need to stay in touch with me at the beginning of the fall semester for the seniors that are graduating uh, uh, in May of that year um, because that's when they really start thinking about their jobs and uh, the best way to do it is to connect with me on LinkedIn. So guys, I appreciate it and I'll see you in the next lecture.